Are you someone who really wants to declutter your life, but you're struggling to let go of items that have some emotional attachment or some sentimental value, and you're not quite sure how to let go? Well, stay tuned because this video is for you. I'm Erin Cook. I'm the creator of Find Your Free Time and the Declutter Challenge, and I'm going to help you understand the five steps that you can take to declutter those items that are so sentimental to you. So before we get started, if you want to see more videos that will help declutter your life and simplify your life or your business, go ahead and subscribe to me here on YouTube. I'm going to be coming out with so many more cool videos as we go along. So go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss a thing. At the end of this video, you're going to get a chance to join the declutter challenge today to help you for 10 days teach you the basic steps that you need to declutter not only your home, but your entire life. So stay tuned for that as well. All right, let's get to the five steps that you can do to let go of emotional clutter. Getting rid of items that are emotionally or sentimentally valuable to us is very difficult. So we're going to use the scenario today that maybe somebody near and dear to you has passed away and they either left you a lot of items, maybe they've given you things in the past, or maybe you're even cleaning out their home, um, which is very difficult, right? So the first thing you need to do is not jump full force into it because that's just gonna lead to failure. But I want you to pick some items to keep on display for the moment when this happens or when you're deciding to just purge your sentimental items. You're going to pick the items you want to keep on display and that's the key. So you're gonna pick things that are important to you, things that you want to put on display because basically if there's something that you wanna keep but you're not really gonna show it off, it's probably more you're keeping it just because that person gave it to you. So maybe it's like a Christmas card, maybe the last Christmas card they gave you or a birthday card or something that they've written to you. Go ahead and put it in a frame or set it on a shelf, you know, open so that you can see what they wrote inside. Put it on display if it means that much to you and makes you that happy and fulfills a purpose. So if you're keeping things that really aren't fulfilling a purpose, those are the things that you can get rid of first, but choose maybe five things that you want to put on display first. So that's your first step. That way you don't feel like you're letting go of everything all at once. And the next step is to box everything else up that is attached to that emotion. So if it's something that your mom or dad, whoever passed away in this scenario has given you, you're going to put it in a box if you can, or if it's something larger, you know, put it in storage, maybe in your basement or in a closet somewhere. So you're going to let those items sit there for quite a while while you're mentally preparing to get rid of them, okay? So everything is going to go into storage one way or another because this is going to take time. You can't just break emotional attachments like that. So that's the second step. Now when you're ready to start decluttering those items, you're going to want to enlist the help of somebody that can keep you in line per se, somebody that's going to help you make those decisions because you're still probably going to feel that emotion, but we need to understand also when we're starting to purge and starting to get rid of things that those items are not going to bring that person back, number one, and that's obvious, but sometimes you know we feel that if we're getting rid of things, we're getting rid of the person, and that's not so. You know, and the other thing is that those items aren't the only thing that are, are going to trigger that memory of that person for you. So you don't need those items to trigger those happy memories that you're feeling when you have those items around you, if that makes sense. So enlist the help of somebody that can help you along, but also understands, you know, what you're going through, maybe a closer friend, but somebody that's going to say, hey, you know what, this really isn't serving a purpose. Let's get rid of it. You know, let's keep this per thing instead. So that's step number three. After you've enlisted the help of somebody to help you purge and get rid of things, you are going to go box by box or item by item. And what you're going to do, and this is the fun part, this is where you can relive all the memories. And this can be a happy experience. Don't think of it as something that's, oh, I have to clean you know, this out today and I have to decide whether or not to throw away these memories. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take a picture of all of the items in the box. So group them all together. You don't have to do every single thing a different picture. Maybe put, set them on the table, make it look nice for a minute, 
and take a photo of it. And what I want you to do at the end of this process is all those photos put into a memory book. That way you don't feel like you're throwing away anything. But it's not taking up all that space and emotional, you know, baggage isn't hanging around you all the time, okay? You don't always have that feeling of, oh, I've got all this stuff that I feel like I can't get rid of, okay? So take a picture. We're going to save it till the end after you've gone through everything and then make a cool memory book out of it. How neat is that? So lastly, it's time to get rid of the clutter. And I say clutter in a loving way. It doesn't mean that it's junk. It just means it's something that's taking up space in your life that you don't necessarily need. So you're going to ask yourself a few questions, okay? You're just going to say, you know what? Is this item serving an actual purpose? So maybe it's like a rocking chair. Maybe you need a rocking chair, and that will serve a purpose, right? So you can go ahead and keep that. But if it's something, maybe just a piece of paper that doesn't even really mean anything, maybe it's her last um, last month she was scratching down some grocery items for you to buy at the store, something like that. If it's not serving a purpose, chances are you really don't need it and you can take a photo and you'll still have that memory, but it won't be taking up the space. And I want you to ask yourself with each item, am I keeping this only because it's from this person or I have this emotional attachment to this item for some reason? If that's the only reason you're keeping it, go ahead and get rid of it. You have permission. And you don't have to necessarily trash it. You can give it to somebody that maybe can use it. But not every person's junk is another person's treasure. It can also be another person's junk as well. So you have to remember that too. So if it's not serving a purpose, if you really don't need the item, go ahead and feel free to release it. The person, if they're not here with you anymore is not going to care. They're not going to want you to keep all of the stuff that's causing you stress because visual clutter causes us stress and that's what we need to purge. Um, so if you can keep the memories in a memory book, why not do that? That's my suggestion for getting rid of emotional ties to items and still having the memories. So if that has helped you or you like this video, again, go ahead and subscribe to us. And if you want to take that next step into decluttering your life and learning the whole process to declutter not only your home, but everything that you do, maybe it's your email, maybe it's your desktop, whatever it may be that you need to declutter, even relationships, go ahead and subscribe to the declutterchallenge.com. That link is right here in YouTube, and it's thedeclutterchallenge.com, and that's going to bring you to our Declutter Challenge. It is 10 days long. It is 10 minutes a day to learn everything you need to know about the decision-making process when you're decluttering, setting goals for your decluttering so that you can not only declutter your home, like I said, but anything that you want to. So go ahead at thedeclutterchallenge.com, subscribe for us for more videos like this, and we'll see you there. God bless and what not to keep from their home, let's say. Now, um, if you're like, ugh, I can't do this, ah.